is constructed in the familiar three-act formula. However, these divisions are not cold acts, but images. Lorca's play, Mariana Pineda, is divided into three estampas, which are translated as engravings. I prefer the word images. A estampa is used in the sense of the boy is the image of his father, the estampa de su padre. The three subjects of the opera were real people. On top of that, they were historical figures. But there is a third dimension, the lore of the characters, which intensifies their actions, giving them a mythic quality. The opera embraces all three, but the emphasis is on the myth. Mariana lived during a time of rebellion in Europe. The era is called the Age of Liberation, when the people rose up against the kings and sounded the beginning of the end of the absolute monarchy. This time of political upheaval was accompanied by a fierce need to embrace all that was traditional in society and to eschew any new ideas or change. The result was great intolerance an attitude that had not changed much in the time of Lorca. Indeed, the climate did not begin to change until after the death of Franco. Even now, old patterns die hard. While attending a conference a few years ago, I was surprised to hear a Spanish colleague boast of his lineage in terms of la pureza de la sangre, the purity of blood. That is to say, he could prove that only Catholics were to be found in his family tree for four generations on all four sides. Several factors contributed to the harsh, harsh death visited on Mariana. They were her illegitimate birth and her father's Indiano background. He was born in Guatemala City, making him less than acceptable due to his unknown lineage. This theme of purity of the blood is central to the opera La Forza del Destino, and we see it up until the 20th century in Nada Menos Que Todo Un Hombre by Unamuno. The lack of status intensified Mariana's treasonous acts of harboring dissidents and embroidering a Masonic flag. Were she of high rank, her crimes would have been punished in a kinder way. Dying at the Carrote, is one of the most painful deaths imaginable. The victim has an iron collar placed around her neck, and the screw is then tightened until she is strangled. In literature, a writer often uses an historical setting to provide distance from the uh, existing political conditions. Here, Lorca uses the play to draw a parallel between the two eras of repression. We can witness the historical conditions of Mariana's time by viewing Goya's paintings. And when we think of the horrors of the Civil War, Guernica comes to mind. It is a portrait of the destruction and despair pervasive in Spain in that era. The two themes that dominate the lives of the protagonists are love and liberty. In the play, as in real life, Mariana loved Pedro. She said that she loved liberty, but one wonders what that means. Her love for Pedro is so intense that she ignores all others. She dismissed the need of her children, refused the true affection offered by Fernando, rejected the advice of those who cared for her, and sacrificed herself for the undeserving Pedro. It is what the Spanish call loco amor. Reason had no part in it. Lorca, who grew up hearing about Mariana the person, was reminded of her legend by the statue which he saw every day from his window. Her story inspired him to revisit the myth that had grown up around her, associating her passion with the love of liberty. He seems to have projected his desire for freedom onto her passion, attributing political motives to her personal desires. When the opera opens, we are immediately confronted with the duel of life and death. I know the matter begins with the sound of flowing water and a galloping horse. I couldn't help but think that I read that boy water would have loved this. <laughs> the water evokes the spring, the symbol of life and its sustainer, underscoring the irony of the poet's death at this oasis. The horse suggests the arrival of the Guardia Civil, 
On another level, horses are associated with sexual desire. For example, in Bernada Alba, the girl's repressed desire is expressed by the raging of the stallion in the stable. In the opera, it may be a symbol of Mariana's love for Pedro. Lorca's poems are full of references to horses carrying someone to his or her death. And in the opera's second image, death arrives on horseback. So it is that the opera begins with this duel of life and death. The first scene of the opera recalls the play by repeating the ballad used in Mariana Pineda, Aquel día tan triste en Granada que a las piedras hacía llorar. When the actress Margarita Shinabu appears in this scene, she unifies the three protagonists. Lorca associates his purpose with that of Mariana, expresses his love for her, identifies her as the symbol of the revolution. Margarita played the role of Mariana and kept the flame of Lorca alive. So the three become one. The Ballad of Sadness <clears throat> again opens the second image. Margarita laments that she could not persuade Lorca to leave Spain with her. In the background, the rant on the Falange radio gives testimony to the savage nature of the fight between the liberals and the right wing. As is pointed out, Lorca did not commit an overt act against the government. He challenged the status quo and showed sympathy for change and modernization to a degree that was understood to challenge what it meant to be Spanish. The ballad again opens the third image. Federico gives life to Mariana in the play. Margarita perpetuates her story as well as the poets. Margarita pledges not only to continue his, to present his works, but has a student groom to continue her mission. Lorca and Margarita both identify with Mariana. Nuria, the student, states the theme of immortality. When our voices are silenced, we vanish from memory. When those around us die, we are gone. The last scenes are brimming with symbols. Lorca emerges from the fountain, a resurrection. The characters identify with one another, becoming the other, remaining themselves. In the last exchange, the trio says, here is my blood shed for thee, drink it and tell my story. One recalls the Last Supper. Lorca becomes the sacrificial lamb. Again, we see repeated the previously introduced motifs of water as life, death, and immortality. The repetition of the ballad at the end of, the, of each act, the reweaving of the themes throughout the opera, and the identification of one character with another forms a circular structure. With the final restatement of the ballad, the circle is complete. Ay que día tan triste en Granada que a las piedras hacía llorar. The ban on Lorca's writing was rescinded in 1953, but it was not until after Franco's death in 1975 that his works were openly enjoyed. Thank you.